Hello friends, I'm Arpita Karwa and welcome back to another interesting literary video. In this video, I am going to delve into one of the most famous topics of UGC Net, which is titles of books that have been borrowed from famous poems. It is a noticeable trend that there have been several questions from this topic in the past years. This video shall be divided into two parts, so get ready with your notepad to jot down the names of the books that I am going to discuss today. So friends, most of you would agree that winter and reading books often create a cozy combination. The chill outside makes the warmth of a blanket and a good book even more inviting. The sound of pages turning can be a comforting soundtrack against the backdrop of winter winds. It's a season that encourages introspection, makes it ideal time to delve into captivating stories or explore the knowledge through literature. By the way, did you know who said this? If I read a book and it makes my whole body so cold, no fire can warm me, I know that is poetry. It's a quote by Emily Dickinson. Numerous other writers have said wonderful things about poetry. Edgar Allan Poe said, Poetry is the rhythmical creation of beauty in words. And the legendary romantic poet P.B. Shelley was of the view that poetry is the record of the best and the happiest moments of the happiest and the best minds. Poetry is indeed a source of inspiration. In this video, I am going to share with you famous poems that inspired great writers in naming the titles of their novels and it's absolutely fascinating how literary connections add depth to the meaning of the titles and the works they represent. Now let's jump to the names of famous book titles that are inspired from memorable lines of poetry. One of the famous book titles that comes from poetry is A Handful of Dust, written by Even Waugh. This title is taken from The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. Here are the lines. I will show you something different from either your shadow at morning striding behind you or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. A handful of dust reflects the post-World War I disillusionment and a sense of cultural decay. In the novel, Even Waugh uses this title to symbolize the crumbling and disintegration of traditional values within British society between the wars. The second book that comes to my mind is a very canonical text, Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe, and its title is taken from The Second Coming by William Butler Yeats. The lines goes like this, Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. In the context of Achebe's novel, the title signifies the disintegration of the Igbo society as it encounters the impact of colonialism and the clash between traditional and Western values. It encapsulates the profound disruptions and cultural factors that occurs within the narrative, emphasizing the breakdown of social, religious and political structures in the face of external forces. This makes Yeats' line apt for the novel. The third novel that we are going to talk about is No Longer at Ease, which is written by Chinua Achebe. The book's title comes from the closing lines of T.S. Eliot's poem, Journey of the Maggie. We return to our places, these kingdoms, but no longer at ease here in the old dispension, with an alien people clutching their gods. I should be glad of another death. These were the lines. The title No Longer at Ease by Chinua Achebe suggests a departure from the state of comfort or ease. It reflects the protagonist Obi uh, Okua's struggle as he na navigates the complexity of the post-colonial Nigerian society. The phrase encapsulates the tension between the traditional values and challenges presented by modernity and corruption. Obi, who has been educated in England, finds himself caught between conflicting cultural forces and the title signifies this uneasiness and moral dilemmas he faces in this changing world. Yet another famous novel is of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Its title comes from To a Mouse on Turning Her Up in Her Nest and With the Plough by the famous peasant poem Robert Burns and the lines goes like this. 
but little mouse you are not alone in proving foresight may be vain the best laid schemes of mice and men go often ask you and leave us nothing but grief and pain for promised joy translated from scots the title means the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry in the context of steinbeck's novel the title captures the essence of the character george and linny dreams aspirations highlighting the fragility and vulnerability of human ambitions before we move on to the next point here is something that i want to share if you are preparing for ugc net paper 1 or paper 2 i have some amazing news for you we offer four separate video courses for ugc net paper 1 and ugc net paper 2 of english commerce and management in all our online courses we provide you with topic wise video lectures with rich animations covering all topics in a step by step manner which works even when you've not done any previous preparation We also provide you with high quality PDF that covers syllabus wise topics comprehensively and ensure you qualify your dream exam in first attempt. Along with video lectures and PDFs, we also have mock tests series which comes up with 3000 questions and detailed explanation. With every test you get detailed performance report and your ranking in the All India Leaderboard which will help you spot your weak and strong areas. We cover all important topics in our course in a very detailed manner and you can also check out the demo material before you decide to enroll in the courses. Even if you're preparing for these exams on your own, it will be very very important if you can go through the detailed syllabus that is listed on our website and also go through the past year papers of all these competitive exams. The link of our website and all the courses are given in the description box below so you can check out the details and if you want you can also call on the number displayed on the screen for more information related to our courses feel free to shoot your queries on the whatsapp number displayed on the screen and me and my team will be more than happy to assist you now let's move to title number 5 you must have surely heard of this one far from the madding crowd by thomas hardy This title comes from the transitional poet Thomas Gray's elegy written in Country Churchyard and the lines goes like this Far from the madding crowd's ignoble strife their sober wishes never learned to stray along the cool sequestered vale of life they kept the noiseless tenor of their way This phrase far from the madding crowd refers to a tranquil and remote place away from the chaos and busyness of society In the context of Hardy's novel, the title emphasizes the protagonist Bathsheba's desire for independence and solitude. It reflects her journey to find her own path away from the societal expectations and influences. The title captures the theme of individualism and the pursuit of a quieter, more authentic life in the midst of societal pressures. And William Shakespeare, this famous man, often referred to as the father of english literature is also credited with inspiring several authors for their book titles let's look at some most famous ones so the next one is remembrance of the things past by marcel proust this title is taken from the very famous sonnet 30 by william shakespeare and the lines goes like this when to the sessions of sweet silent thought i summon up remembrance of things past second novel inspired by shakespeare's poetry is brave new world by oldus huxley the title is inspired by a line from william shakespeare's play the tempest and the lines are oh wonder how many godly creatures are there here how beauteous mankind is oh brave new world that has such people isn't The third inspiration from Shakespeare is The Sound and the Fury by William Faulkner. The title is taken from a line in William Shakespeare's Macbeth. And what are these lines? These are out out brief candle, life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury. signifying nothing this is from macbeth act 5 scene 5 next one is as i lay dying which is a gothic novel by american author william faulkner 
It is ranked among the best novels of the 20th century. The title is derived from William Maris 1925 translation of Homer's Odyssey. The title as I lay dying by William Falconer is taken from a passage in Homer's Odyssey where Odysseus speaks about his own death. In Falconer's novel the title signifies the theme of mortality and various characters perspective as they grapple with death. The last book in title that we are going to discuss today is inspired by another dawn of literature, Mr. John Donne, who has inspired a book's title with his poetry. The title is For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway, and it comes from Meditation number no. 17 by John Donne. The lines are No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never sent to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. In John Donne's work, he suggests that the tolling of a funeral bell signifies the interconnectedness of humanity. For Hemingway's novel, the title reflects the overarching theme of the novel, which is about the interconnectedness of human lives the impact of war on individuals and the inevitability of death. The tolling bell serves as a symbol of the collective human experience and the idea that the death or suffering of one person affects the entire community. Now, we reach the conclusion of this video. Let me know the names of books that you didn't know were inspired from poetry and whether you liked this compilation and if you would want a second part of the same. Put all of that in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, then please like this video by giving it a big fan thumbs up and also share it with other fellow aspirants who are struggling with similar kind of questions. So with that note, I would like to take your leave. I'm quite eager to know how you felt about this video. Did you like it? Not like it? Did you find it helpful? Please share your views in the comments below. Also, if you have any questions, any doubt, or if you want me to make a video on any other topic, then feel free to put that in the comment section as well. I shall be back soon with the second part of this video. Until then, stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.